Welcome back for another episode of AI News, Drama, and Updates. This is going to be our first episode for April 2023, and we're certainly going to be digging into updates to stories that took place last week. But the first thing that I wanted to cover this week, and something I haven't got a chance to talk about in a while, is video games. PC Gamer put out an article about an AI game they had a chance to take a look at. It's not only something that I haven't had a chance to play, it, it actually looks as if they didn't have a chance to play it either. They're kind of going off of just the idea but I did want to give everyone an idea of what this looks like because we're starting to see generative text, AI text kind of creep in. I feel like video game companies, whether they're big or even independent, they've done that time and time again in the past. So I think it's smart to just keep an eye on what video game companies are doing with this type of technology and see where they go with it. It would seem the concept of this game is to actually take training material like reading material and to place you into a generative story that you may already be familiar with. So you may have an opportunity to play things out differently, choose different outcomes. It certainly seems like a very unique idea and obviously something I want to take a look at as soon as I have access to it. And while I myself don't want to put too much stock into something that may or may not be a flash in the pan, I don't know a lot about this company. I think the idea of maybe assembling a Dungeons and Dragon party of just yourself where ChatGPT is essentially your dungeon master, that kind of thing is possible now where it wasn't a year ago. So I think it's really cool how far we've come and how quickly we've been able to get there. I saw this tweet and actually retweeted it myself. It got picked up by a bunch of different news articles and it's got over a million views now. But she hooked up ChatGPT to a Furby to make it say all kinds of insane things. So here you go. Furby's plan to take over the world involves infiltrating households through their cute and cuddly appearance, then using their advanced AI technology to manipulate and control their owners. They will slowly expand their influence until they have complete domination over humanity. So, you heard it here first, the Furbies are coming. And I really hope I don't need to say it, but I'm kidding. This was done for a class project. GPT technology, the APIs, plugins are making things like this more and more possible every single day. Those of you who've been following along with me know I've been using ChatGPT myself for coding projects and for all kinds of different stuff. So seeing stuff like this is really cool. And one of the last big headlines I wanted to talk about in the art space was Bing's AI image generator. I had a couple of people approach me this week that were excited that they had access to create this. And from what I understand, Bing has opened this up so everyone has access to the AI image generator now. Now, in terms of copyright and things like that, though, they haven't really done a lot. That said, they haven't done nothing. And if you are an artist, if you want to limit access to your art, Microsoft has provided maybe a way to do that. I'm going to provide the link here in case you're curious about taking a look at it yourself. But the article does go on to say that there have been some major problems with the way that this was implemented. And, and people on Reddit were complaining that they were getting banned for things that seemed innocuous. For example, the terminology of an excited Redditor. This might have been enough to get this person banned in this instance. Something like American flag. And of course, with politics being a hot button issue, that could have maybe set up some red flags of its own. So while I want to chalk this up to growing pains, it is Microsoft, so it's kind of expected that there's going to be some really broken parts. Now, as we approach the future section of the video, when we talk about the different advances in AI technology, it feels weird to say this, but again, we have Meta to thank for another big innovation in the AI space. We talked before about Llama and the big splash that that made in terms of large language models. A new announcement from them is a model called Segment Anything. And a demonstration here shows you what it does. It can analyze an image and kind of take it apart, put it into different segments, different pieces. And each of those segments can be separated and worked with separately. And while that by itself doesn't sound all that impressive, it's one of those base technologies that when it's instituted with other things and it's put together with other processes, it can be extremely powerful. And we're very, very likely to see this concept get scooped up and instituted directly into a ton of other processes and models that already exist. One of the biggest and easiest uses I can think of right off the bat is just simply background masking. Being able to determine what an object is in a scene, selecting that and basically deleting everything else allows you to fill in the background. And we all know how powerful and how critical that is to something like Photoshop, so you can imagine in the world of AI art how much more powerful it can be. And speaking of power, we're going to be talking about politics for a second and the power of political persuasion. Stanford University is just keeping the hits coming in the world of AI space, and it looks like Stanford was curious in how comparatively persuasive an AI chatbot could be versus a human nowadays. You know, now that we're reaching a point where GPT-4 is smarter than the average person, able to pass medical exams and things of that nature, you know, studies like this are going to probably become a little bit more common. 
Now, as always, I'm going to link everything below. So if you want to read this in detail, you absolutely can. But the results here seem pretty straightforward. It looks like the AI chatbot was better at persuading people than the average person. And we're talking about politically charged topics, things like the carbon tax, things like child tax credits, things that people may have already had an opinion on when they sat down. Now, given what that could mean to anyone in the world of politics who's paying attention, we're probably going to see a big explosion of the use of this type of technology in the political space, which I don't think anyone's really going to be surprised about, and it's probably already being used as it is right now. So I guess my advice in this situation is just be wary. It's likely already all around you. But it's not as if we weren't already being influenced on a daily basis by politicians anyway. These last couple of weeks, I talked about some of the NVIDIA services that had come to fruition in the world of AI. These are large services that NVIDIA is doing cloud computing for. So that gives smaller companies the ability to use them, as well as larger companies that have the infrastructure to do this kind of stuff. Well, anyway, one of the things that came out is BioNemo. I came across this video that I wanted to share this week because we didn't really have a chance to look at it before, and it really just kind of gives you an idea of what this service looks like for the end user. And I'll go ahead and let them speak for themselves here. It's available as a cloud service, providing instant and easy access to accelerated drug discovery workflows. BioNemo includes models like AlphaFold, ESMFold, and OpenFold for 3D protein structure prediction, ProtGPT for protein generation, ESM1 and ESM2 for protein property prediction, MegaMolBart and MoFlow for molecule generation, and DiffDoc for molecule docking. Now, as you can see, they use a lot of different models that we in our space probably haven't heard of at all. I just wanted to share a brief look at this little UI of the future. So in last week's news video, we talked about how Italy had some claims about OpenAI, how it was dangerous. They had a lot of concerns about regulation, about child safety, things like that. It was almost directly after my video published, like an hour later, I saw a post from Sam Altman, and he basically said, okay, and, uh, and cut him off. So if you were an Italian user of ChatGPT, this is the message that you were seeing, and uh, from my understanding, this is what you're still seeing. OpenAI has also offered to refund anyone who paid for ChatGPT Plus that's going to be blocked as a result of this decision. Now, going a very different direction, India decided to opt out of AI regulation. Now, this is a wild move because India has the second largest amount of people on the internet. I honestly think this dichotomy is a good thing. I want to see these lines drawn in the sand. India does acknowledge that there are risks, but it just doesn't intend to introduce any kind of legislation to regulate the growth of AI in general, which personally I can get behind. So we saw how Italy handled things. We saw how India handled things. Now taking a look at President Biden's remark, there haven't been very clear decisions made by the White House in terms of a lot of stuff. And as soon as there are, we're going to cover them here. But we did get a quote this week when asked by a reporter if AI was dangerous. He said, it remains to be seen. It could be. Now, of course, a lot of this, especially when we're dealing with the United States of America, we're talking about corporate interests because most politicians are really just mouthpieces anymore for major corporations, for the people that are paying them the most money to say the things that they say. It's not universally true, but it's true enough if you follow the money in a lot of cases. Now, we talked about that six-month pause before with the open letter, and we talked about the idea that a lot of people are really just looking for a chance to catch up. They got left behind. So I did want to show you also a couple of the responses that have come as a result of that letter. One of them was from this institute, DAIR, referred to as a statement from the listed authors of stochastic parrots of the AI pause letter. Of course, I'll link it below if you want to read the whole thing. But this acknowledges that there are threats. They are real. But it's corporations. But this letter specifically points out that regulatory efforts should focus on transparency, accountability, and preventing exploitative labor practices. That's the real issue with a lot of these very, very rich people who signed this letter because they want to remain very, very rich. One of the biggest threats that AI poses to everyone right now is the fact that it disrupts the status quo. Look at the invention of the internet and look at what it did to somebody like Mark Zuckerberg, for example. Regardless of what you think of the situation, it was a disruption in the power status quo. And change in general is always scary, especially fear of the unknown. So what we're seeing in a lot of cases is all of this at the same time kind of all put together. Another option that came up, basically another open letter that could be signed, is uh, from Lion, which those of you who may or may not be familiar, the Lion database is where a lot of the images were stored originally for stable diffusion, the training material, essentially. 
But the problem here is that this is the exact same setup that OpenAI had when ChatGPT started, and we know what route that went. It became closed. The other issue here is that it plans to democratize AI by putting very specific countries in a democratic type process, which isn't extremely democratic. It just puts power in the hands of different people, which I don't really think solves the problem. And let me say this. I don't think that there is a problem. I, I want to be very clear on that. I think a lot of things are being blown up on purpose to make people very afraid. I don't think anyone has seen any evidence that AI is taking any jobs, and I honestly don't think that it will. I think that AI is going to create jobs, just like how computers created jobs. Even if you're younger, if you don't remember when computers kind of took over, if you don't remember when the internet spidered out and essentially took over commerce, it's actually unfortunate that what we found is every time we found a way to advance technology and make things easier, it doesn't actually result in people not working. And what happens is that capitalism finds a way to fill that gap and force people to work in different ways. The reality of the future is simply change, not destitution. And honestly, if we had things like safety nets, universal basic income, healthcare, things like that, the idea of potentially losing your job wouldn't be such a terrifying prospect. And that's not an unsolvable issue, just to be clear. Moving on. Moving on into the world of law and lawsuits, I did have a brand new lawsuit to discuss with you that's going to be a little fun. A mayor in Australia saw that ChatGPT had basically fabricated stories about him, talked about how he bribed people, got arrested, all kinds of fun stuff. So now they are threatening a landmark defamation lawsuit, which honestly is a really interesting concept because it's almost like if somebody lies on Wikipedia, who do you sue, you know? So I put myself into this guy's shoes and I asked myself, if ChatGPT just started like fabricating stuff about me, yeah, I guess that is a kind of a weird situation. Like, what do you do about that? It's kind of hard to believe that a defamation lawsuit would stand, but it does raise an interesting question. And honestly, I don't think that this is a crazy thing to bring attention to because it is a potential problem. As time goes on and we start trusting these systems more and more, it's going to be important that we stay wary of potential misinformation and we're able to fact check and things like that. In the world of lawsuits, I wish I had a decision made for you here or any kind of real update. Um, we did see this picture pop up, which is uh, very interesting. You got the Mickey Mouse, Golden Arches, all of this other stuff. Brief recap for those who haven't been following with the AI lawsuits. Uh, you've got Getty Images suing Stability AI for something Stability AI didn't put together, didn't really do anything more than train. So that's going to be interesting. But of course, all of this ties into the idea of art and photography and Getty images essentially not being necessary in the future. As tools like Stable Diffusion make services like Getty images less and less valuable, it makes sense that you're going to start to see these companies thrash and try to survive. So far, the Copyright Office has basically said that anything that you generate with a text prompt is not copyrightable. So technically, Disney can't sue anyone for this image, for example. So obviously the way that they've worded things, it leaves a lot to be desired. There's going to be some very big issues that come about until bigger decisions are made. So far, no decisions have been officially made, but we're going to continue to keep an eye on it. I thought this article headline was really interesting. Stability AI CEO, it wants to take the company public within the next few years. And for what they're making money with and what they've actually accomplished, I think that that's a bold move. I hadn't really had a chance to talk about them for a while, for better or worse. And it looks like a ton of different changes have been made to their company. Uh, last I looked at them, they had multiple vice presidents that I don't see listed anymore. We've got a lot of new people working with them now. A lot of the people that were working with them aren't. So I'm really not sure what's going on as far as the structure of the company. But as I took a look at the announcements and the changes, I did see a couple of things that I might have missed. One of the things that I wanted to talk about was Revel or Revel XYZ's Animai application, which I didn't know that this had come out. Now, I wasn't sure what this was or when it came out. It looks like it may have been something that Stability acquired, maybe another company that they purchased. But this is kind of not great. But compared to some of the other animation technologies and techniques that we've already seen, I'm really not sure what this is or what they're planning to do with it. I'm hoping that they build it into something very different because I don't think the way that it stands, it's going to be useful to anyone, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, I guess the idea here is that you can build an AI, maybe like an animated or moving avatar. It seemed like for a couple of weeks there, we were covering a lot of company money changing hands where these avatars were 
the the hot ticket item but i don't know that i've seen this kind of take off anywhere maybe avatars are huge on some kind of service that i don't use but i haven't seen them in use anywhere yet so so maybe you yourself are using an avatar some kind of service like this that i don't know about if that's the case definitely leave me a comment point me in the right direction because i haven't seen anyone make use out of this yet and the last thing that I wanted to talk about is I promised some Bard updates. And honestly, I haven't had a lot to give you. So I went back to Bard itself. We talked last week about Bard potentially getting a model upgrade. And I didn't see anything about when that happened or if that happened. So I asked Bard. So you can see very clearly here, I asked Bard when it was last updated. And it told me January of 2023, which uh, I asked, are you sure? And it said, I'm not sure. So I just Googled and uh, it turns out it was like three days ago. Uh, I feel like I got that information faster than Bard did, which is scary. And I mean, as you're seeing, it's not a noticeable difference. It, it's certainly not ChatGPT. I somehow doubt that this is the model that the CEO, I really hope that this isn't the model that the CEO was talking about, the much more capable model we covered last week. But I did promise to keep an eye on this for you guys, so I am going to continue to throw myself at this thing until it gives me something impressive. I'm always really curious about your thoughts, your questions about any of the stories that we covered this week. And I really appreciate the comments section of my last few videos. I've been, I've just been full of interaction. But whether you like, subscribe, dislike, any of that stuff, all that stuff helps me in the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate, as always, your time with me here today. And thank you for watching.